amen, to build up the saints of God to do the work of the ministry. Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, look at verse number 13. Matthew 16, verse 13 says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. I say unto you also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be what? Loosed in heaven. We're talking from the subject matter of identity crisis. Identity crisis. Personally, I have never seen so many people who are who have an issue with knowing who they are. Amen. Knowing whether they're male or female. Knowing whether they're black or white. Amen. I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing this confusion that's happening even in the body of Christ when the, the believer don't know who they are. And the believer doesn't know what authority they have in Christ Jesus. So it's up to us to go through the word of God to find out uh, what he says about us. Amen. Now, the key to us living this abundant life this year is going to be in us knowing who we are. So so if I know who I am and I know what my father has promised me, then I will not settle for less. Amen. And I will not I will not allow the devil to talk me out of the blessings that God has for me. Amen. Now, the truth. Go to John chapter eight, John chapter eight, John chapter eight. The truth of the word of God, it frees you, amen, from all past lies that's been told about who you are, amen, and uh, it sets you free. Glory to God. John chapter 8, we're going to look at verse number 31 and verse number 32. John chapter 8, verse 31 and verse number 32. Look what he says here. John 8, verse number 31. Let me get there. Praise the Lord. Look what he says. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe uh, on him. If thou continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and what? The truth shall what? Make you free. So if I, if I want to be free in life, it's going to be based upon me getting the truth of God's word. And the Bible declares that God's word is truth. Amen. And so once I get the truth, then I will know uh, that who I am in Christ Jesus. Now, the failure that I see to be who we are in Christ discredits the testimony of God in the earth, amen? When God says, I have, I have made you in my image after my likeness, and I've given you dominion over everything that I've made. Well, when I don't know who I am, you know, it discredits God, amen? Hallelujah, amen. And then finally, we found out on last week that my thinking about who I am has been tampered with by the images and thoughts that I have been exposed to. So that's why I have to renew my mind. Go to Romans chapter, Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter number 12. Look at verse number 1. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So if my thinking has been tampered with, I have to go back to the word of God and renew my mind on what he says about me and who he says I am. Amen? Now, there are three levels of knowledge that we have to deal with. Amen. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. There are three levels of knowledge that I have to deal with. The first level of knowledge that I have to deal with is what I call natural knowledge. Natural knowledge. And that's the result of academic exposure. 
So even in the in the history books, they said things, certain things about uh, uh, our forefathers. So I got some academic knowledge of who I am. But now, did they tell it straight? Amen. Now, that, they have been said that people of color have been cursed. Well, that's if I look at the word of God, God tells me I'm blessed. Glory to God. Amen. Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. Look what it says in verse number seven. Second Timothy chapter three. Verse number seven. Look what he says here. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So there are people who are always learning academic knowledge, stay in school forever. You know, school is their occupation. <laughs> Amen. And which is good. I, look, I, I'm not hating on you. I mean, if you want to go get your doctors, your masters, you, you know, whatever else you want to get, fine. Praise the Lord. But that's only natural knowledge. That's only book knowledge. But I need to find out some other kind of knowledge. Go to 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, if I, if I only deal with natural knowledge, I will let natural knowledge supersede spiritual revelation. Amen. And I will not be able to understand the things of God just through natural knowledge. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse number 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 14. Amen. Look what he says here. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. So if I only depend on natural knowledge, Trelanda, then I will miss out on what God has to say. Amen? If I only depend on what I learned at school, you know, in college, and not depend on what God says in his word, then I'm going to miss, amen, everything that God has for me, because... It's going to be foolishness to me. How is it that you could believe that speaking in tongues is communication with the Father? You're going to miss it if you just have natural knowledge. Amen? Now, the second revelation, the second uh, level of knowledge is that of revelation knowledge. Somebody say revelation knowledge. Amen? Now, revelation knowledge comes as a result of you spending time with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen? See, the Holy Spirit has been provided for us, Raven to teach us all truth and bring back to remembrance that which God said. Amen. You in John chapter number uh, 14? John chapter 14. Amen. John chapter 14. Look at verse number 25. John chapter 14, verse number 25. So I need revelation knowledge. I got to get beyond just the natural. Yeah, pursue your degrees, but don't miss the revelation knowledge that God wants to give us. John chapter 14, look at verse number 25. John chapter 14, beginning at verse 25. Look what he says. These things have I spoken unto you, being present with you. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you, what? All things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So when, when I get revelation knowledge, Mary Jane, it is because I'm spending time with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And he promises me that he's going to bring all things back to my remembrance, whatever he said unto me. Amen? Now, one of the things that when we study the word of God, amen, and get this knowledge, this, this, this wisdom that God has, it, it gives the Holy Spirit something to recall. Amen? So when you're going through a difficult situation and you've been spending time with the Holy Spirit, all he does is remind you, amen, of what he's already told you. And whenever the Holy Spirit speaks, he will always speak in, in, in accord with what the word of God says. Amen. And that's why the Bible tells us to seek him early. Amen. See, wouldn't it have been great? If most of us would have started out knowing about God when we were these kids age. Amen. And see, that's why we invest so much into our children's ministry is because we're trying to train them up. Give them this revelation that God has given us right now at an early age. 
so that when something happens in their lives, they already know, all I got to do is speak the word over this thing. Because I've seen my mama do it. I've seen my daddy do it. I've seen pastor do it. Why? So, so all I'm going to do is just mimic what they did. Amen? Because once I get revelation of who God says I am based upon the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Amen? Look, now I've said this over and over again. Everything changes. Amen? So there is natural knowledge. There is revelation knowledge. And watch this now. There is the supernatural knowledge. Amen? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There is the supernatural power, uh, supernatural knowledge that God gives us through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse number 7. See, the gifts are still available to the believer. <laughs> Amen. Whether your church believes in it or not. You know, some, some people say, well, all that's done away with. Well, no, it ain't done away with. Amen. God is still giving gifts to the body, those who want to receive it. Amen. But now I get wisdom, supernatural knowledge, based upon the gifts of the spirit. Verse number seven says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Jump down to verse number 11. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. So now God says now there is a supernatural knowledge that you're able to get based upon the gifts of the spirit. He said, I, I can give wisdom. I can give knowledge for those who want to receive it. Amen. And I can give it to whoever I want. Amen. Hallelujah. God can give it to you if you just receive it. Amen. So some will say, well, you know, Pastor, I don't want to have all that kind of knowledge. Well, no, no. You Look, look, if you have the Holy Spirit who wants to give you the gift of, of wisdom and knowledge so that you can understand the spirit realm, you better receive that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now I extract who I am through this revelation. Amen. Whether it's the revelation knowledge or the supernatural knowledge that God wants to give. I extract who I am based upon what God says. Amen. Now, go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. See, once I get revelation, once I get the supernatural knowledge, then all of my life's purpose, possibilities, and meaning are inseparably connected to, to knowing who I am. Amen. And how I identify myself. You see these young young guys, you know, they got their pants hanging all the way down to the to the to the below their behind, you know, and then they start declaring, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a thug. Well, are you really? That's not who God designed you to be. Amen. And your purpose in life and the possibilities that you have in your life is all wrapped up in you knowing who you are. So if I think I'm a thug, I'm going to act in response to how I think of myself. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if I don't know my purpose, and I don't know the possibilities that God has for me, then I'll, I'll act out of what others have told me. And if you don't know that you have a purpose, just read Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I know the plans and purpose that I have for you. Amen. So if God knows the purpose and plans that he has for me, all I need to do is just tap into God. You in John chapter 1? Look at verse number 22. John chapter 1, verse number 22. Look what he says. Then said they unto him, Who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What says thou of thyself? And John said this, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet as said the prophet Esaias. So now John the Baptist could have said, you know what? I went to engineering school. I got my degree from Lamar. I am an engineer. As a matter of fact, no, I, I you know, I, I, I matriculated in this college and that college and, and, and I am, I am this type of person. I got this type of degree. But John says, I got revelation on who I am. Amen. 
I am one crying in the wilderness because that's my purpose, amen. I am the one that's going and making the way straight. See, my identity comes from knowing who I am. Man, if we could just get that, that, that my identity is not what my, what my title is on my, on, my, on my uniform. That's not who you are. Who you are is based upon you getting a word from the Lord. See, Abraham got a word from the Lord. Abraham said, God said, you are no longer Abram. I call you Abraham, the father of many nations. Now watch this now. Abram had no children. But God called him the father of many nations. Now, what you gonna believe, Abram? To help you out, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna call you Abraham and get you to start calling yourself what I call you. Amen. See, as long as he called himself Abram, he was still fatherless. But the moment that he agreed with God and said, you know what? I'm the father of many nations. Amen. Sariah, you're no longer Sariah. I call you Sarah. Purpose is established because God said it. Okay? Now you are the mother of many. Now, Sariah had a little, needed some help. Because the Bible says that Sariah laughed at God and said, oh, who, me? You could have told, you could have, you could have just done this when I was in my 30s, my 20s and 30s. I'm up in age now. And now you're going to tell me I'm going to be the mother of many? Ain't going to happen. As a matter of fact, I tell you what, God, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to make my own plan. Come here, little girl. Come here. You're going you gonna to be my, my extension. So you're going to be my, uh, what they call them women that, that uh, have the babies for you. You're going to be my surrogate. And, and now, now you're going you gonna to mess up the plan of God because you can't identify with what he called you. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Messed up. Girl had a baby. Then she got upset. Amen. Child ain't done nothing wrong. It was because you couldn't believe what God said about you. That you are the mother of, of, of many. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Jacob had to understand his purpose. And I, I really want to go to Luke chapter 4 because I want you to see what Jesus said, Jesus said about himself. Luke chapter 4. You know, Jesus didn't allow the people of his day, the Pharisees and Sadducees, to define him. Amen. And I like, I like to look at Jesus as a, he was a bad brother, man. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, Jesus walked in their temple, in their church, took their book, and then he said this about himself. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, verse 18, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them were in the, in the, that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Jesus said, okay, I'm going to tell y'all who I am. You don't ever have to guess about it because I know because this is the plan and purpose that God has for me. He said, look, I am come, the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's why I'm here. I'm here to preach. Then he says, not only am I here to preach to the poor, but I'm here to heal the brokenhearted. So if you're brokenhearted, I'm called for you. Then he says, then I'm here to preach the deliverance to the captives. So if you're captive, I'm here to set you free. Then if you're, if you're blind, I want to give you sight. Amen. Then I want to free everybody that's been bruised. And then I'm going to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the Bible says he closed the book, gave it back to him, and sat down. And everybody was looking at him like, who is this man? We don't know ourselves like that. We, we are not that confident to know that that's who we are. But Jesus sat down, gave the book, and said, today, this day, this scripture has been fulfilled. Your scripture, out of your book. <laughs> but that comes as a result of knowing who you are. Amen? Now, I see, Glenn, that there is an assault on our image. Amen. 
there is an assault on our image. Because these are locked, it, 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 it locks a behavior that's outside of the will of God. When our image is in assault, amen, it, uh, it messes the plan of God up, amen. Go to Romans chapter number five. See, when your image is assaulted, you will think that who you are is defined by how you acted, by your performance. Well, God don't love me because I did this, that, and the other. No, baby. God loved you in spite of what you've done. No, no, no. See, see, because that people I try to identify themselves with their present behavior. And if their behavior is outside of the plan of God, they think that God doesn't love them. Amen. But no. God loves you in spite of you. Y yesterday I had, I had a, uh, we were doing a, a what's happening in our neighborhood. And uh, I, ha I had this, this, this lady who came in to talk to me about uh, human trafficking. And, and at 13 she was caught up into the trafficking. Somebody snatched her. And so she told me, she said, they repeatedly told her that God doesn't love you and he doesn't hear, he can't hear you. So for three years, she, she, she decided that she wouldn't cry out to God because God doesn't love me because look at what I'm doing. Then she came to the realization 40 plus years later that God loves me. But when people try to define themselves and are their image is assaulted because of their past misbehavior, then they'll believe that God doesn't love them. Amen? Romans chapter 5. Look at verse number 8. Romans chapter 5, verse number 8. Watch this now. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? So God says, while you were still doing your own thing, don't, don't, don't let your image be assaulted because of what you've been doing. I died for you before you ever accepted me. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Not only that, go to Hebrews chapter number 8. Hebrews chapter 8. Watch this now. You have to see this, man. Because I, I hear it all the time. Well, God can't love me because of all that I've done. Well, my brother and my sister, yeah, I want you to know that God loves you in spite of what you've done. Amen. And all I need to do is just get a correct image of myself. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 12. Look what God says. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. What you say? So all my past misbehavior. God says when I come to him that he's not going to re remember that anymore. As a matter of fact, he's going to change my name, change my identity. Amen. I go into a witness protection program. Hallelujah. Well, God changes all my, he gave me new credit cards. He gave me a new identification. I mean, I got a new driver's license. I got new everything. Because God says, I wiped that stuff clean. And I'm not going to remember your past behavior. Amen. And then my identity is not defined by popular opinion. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, let me give you this, and then we're going to close up tonight. There are four steps to being who you are. Go to Haggai, Haggai, Haggai chapter 1. Four steps to being who you are, who God called you to be. First of all, there is consideration. Somebody say consideration. That's the, the act of personal inspection of the quality of your life. The act of personal inspection of the quality of life. Amen. So I got to have consideration. Hey, God, chapter one in verse number five says, now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is no, none warm. And he that earned wages, earned wages to put in a bag with holes. Thus said the Lord of hosts. Consider your ways. 
So I got to consider, I have to have this consideration, amen? Amen? I got to do a personal inspection on my own life. I, I can't point the finger at you. Because when I point the finger at you, I have three more coming back at me. Amen? The greater thing that we can do is do a self-inspection. We have to consider our own ways. And, and, and look, when you consider your own ways, you will never throw a rock at somebody else. Amen? You remember when they caught the woman in adultery? Amen? They caught the woman in adultery. They bring them to the elders, and Jesus arrives and says, this woman committed adultery. And Jesus didn't pay them no mind. He saw writing on the ground. Nobody know what he wrote on the ground. But then he looked up at him and said, you who are without sin, you cast the first stone. Now, what's interesting about that story is they didn't even consider the man that was in, in, in the bed with him. They only brought the woman. But Jesus had them, look at yourselves, brethren. You who are without sin, you cast the first stone. And the Bible says from the greatest to the least of them, they walked away. And then Jesus asked the woman, what are thy, thine accusers? And she said, I have none. And he says, go and sin no more. But we got to consider ourselves. We got we to we gotta do a self-inspection on us. Amen. We had, you know, we had some, a situation where a young lady, she got pregnant and uh, out of wedlock. And uh, I, I, I told her, I said, listen, I am not going to let anybody mess with you. Amen. I'm your pastor. I'm the shepherd of this house. And I will protect you. Now, you made a mistake. Okay. And your mistake is more visible than others' mistakes. Amen. Yours is going to be seen. But I am not going to let anybody mess with you. Amen. Because all of us have sinned. All of us have come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. So ain't no sense in me having, putting her on public display and saying, well, what's the pleasure of the church? The pleasure of the church is to love her in spite of what she's going through. Amen. Because I've considered myself. The second thing, step that we need to, we need to know about who we are is conviction. Somebody say conviction. Conviction is the point in time where we agree with God and surrender to his will. That we have a personal conviction, amen? Now, the angel goes to Mary and says, Mary, you're highly favored, okay? And this is what Mary says, bid unto me according to your word. That was this conviction that took place. See, she started to agree with what God said, okay? If this is what God wants for my life, bid unto me according to that word, amen? So there must be a conviction, amen? Then there must be a confession. The third thing is confession. Because the process of faith that brings to pass the promises of God, amen, are unquestionable. Amen. God desires that we speak who we are. And that's why he tells us that death and life are in the power of our tongue. So if death and life are in the power of my tongue, then if I want to change my condition, I want to change my behavior, I need to learn how to speak it. Yeah, yeah. Amen? So I speak myself into greatness. I don't care what folks say. I call myself great. Amen? Lady Gwen, she called me great. <laughs> look, 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 you know, and, 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 and so lately she's been saying every morning she look up, you know, and she just look at her husband like, oh, look at that man right there. I said, well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But if you don't call yourself what God calls you, who going to call you? Amen. So, so, so I, I call myself great because the greater one lives on the inside of me. Amen. I call myself highly favored of God because that's what God says. So I, I release that into the atmosphere and I don't care who, who says anything about it. Amen. Because you're not the determining factor for who I am. So I just get the word of God and I take all them folks' names that's in that Bible that some of y'all can't even pronounce. I take them out the Bible, put my name in there and say what God said about them, that's what he says about me. Amen? But there has to be this, this verbalization of what God says you are and who God says you are. Okay? And then the, the last, the last step, 
to being who you are is corresponding actions. Corresponding actions. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Amen. There has to be some practical living. Some action. Amen. Behind who you believe God says you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse number 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35. Watch this now. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience. Here's the key. That after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So there has to be some corresponding actions. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. Amen. So if you believe God about who you are, then you're going to act in accord with what he said. So if God says that you are a mighty man of valor, you're not going to walk around with your head down. As if you are, you know, you're nobody. No, you're going to walk with a, a new boldness in your life because that's what God said. If God says that you are a virtuous woman of God, amen, then you act like that. There has to be a corresponding action. Amen. As a matter of fact, for, for, for the single women, I tell them all the time, hey, look, the Bible says that he's looking for you. Well, you got to act like he's looking for you. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you stop, you stop chasing and let him find you. Amen. But you have to have corresponding actions. That's, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. So the four steps, again, are consideration, having a conviction, Confession and what? Corresponding actions. And if I, if, I, if I take these four steps, I will become who God says I am. Amen? Praise the Lord. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen? <laughs>